Dr. Smith and I are going to talk a little bit about high speed planners. I'm going to get it. Yeah, thanks, guys. I'm going to kind of set Aaron up and talk a little bit about some of the work we've done looking at the question or answering the question <clears throat> do you, you buy a faster planner or do you buy a wider planner if you're looking to increase planning capacity? And that's been one of the biggest questions now with the new technology that's coming out with the high speed planners is what in your farming operation is a better move as, as far as purchasing equipment. So if you look at why we are concerned, uh, some of the work that uh, <clears throat> Dr. McClure has done at the University of Tennessee, we're trying to plant our crops within a window. There's optimum windows for all crops. In this particular project she looked at, it was about a five year project and looking at yield loss depending on when you planted the crop. And so this early April for us, it's kind of the optimum time and as we go further and further in to uh, you know the spring into the planting season then we start to see a, a drop in yield and you can see about a 12 percent drop from early april to late april now this had five years worth of data it had two wet years one drought year and and two normal years and i'm not sure we even know what a normal year is anymore and so when you take out uh, the the two wet years you see about a 25% drop in yield from early April planted corn to late April planted corn. And so what we're looking at is we're losing revenue. <clears throat> now if we want to be able to plant within those windows, what are our options? This is what we've seen a lot in the last few years. And this was taken, you know, drop off the bluff uh, up near uh, Gates, Tennessee, and we see this quite a bit. We see more high intensity early season rains than we had in previous years. And so a lot of times when we're trying to get into those optimum planting windows, it's too wet to put a planter in. And I know with, with cotton types, and we've had a lot of folks wanting to plant cotton and we've hit this date of no return because we just could not get into the field. And so our options are, you know, we can increase planting speed or we can increase planter width. And that's going to be able to help us increase planting capacity. By capacity, I'm talking acres per hour. Uh, if you look at planting capacity, if you're f traveling about five miles an hour with a 40-foot planter, the best you can do is 24 acres an hour. Now, that is if you do not stop to fill up seed, you do not turn, you do not do anything. You plan in a straight row as long as you can for an hour, and the best you can do is 24.2 acres an hour. And you can see as we go wider, we can get more acres. But we know we can't plant 100% of the time because we've got to turn, we've got to pick up seed, we've got various asunder, we've got to travel within the field. <laughs> so when you start looking at field efficiency, the amount of time you actually have the planter in the ground, that's what we were looking at at this project. There's a lot of old data out there that was done years ago with stopwatches. We're talking about in the 70s. And a lot of our uh, values that we still use today were based off of those going out, sitting there with a stopwatch from the time they hit the field until they came out. We kind of mechanized that a little bit, put a little bit of technology in it. But we're looking at observed field capacity divided by the theoretical field capacity. That's what I just showed you. 24.2 acres per hour is theoretical. That's the best you can do at 100% field efficiency. And when you start looking at observed efficiency, we started looking at the time we plant, the time we turn, any infield traveling. We start on this end of the field and we end up on the way on the other end of the field. We've got to come all the way back out. So any infield traveling, time to fold, time to unfold, uh, loading seed, and hopefully you all get out several times during the day and check seed depth, because y'all know it's critical. So these things right here, take that efficiency from 100% and drop it. And what we were looking at is what is that percentage of time in the fields that we typically plant in the southeast, primarily what we did is in Tennessee and Oklahoma. And what we're looking at is what is that field efficiency? Because that's the value that Dr. Smith needs to be able to do any economic analysis. So what we did is we put uh, a CAN bus data logger on high-speed planter here in, in Tennessee, in western Tennessee, and in north central Oklahoma, and then we also ran conventional planters at 60 foot and 80 foot 
in Oklahoma. So we kind of kind of spread of different field sizes, different field shapes. And you're going to see if you can find the biggest fields that you can possibly plant, that's where you're going to see the best efficiency and the most capacity per hour. So really we had about, oh, 1,500 acres with the 40 foot here in Tennessee, and you can see about 4,600 with 60 foot. So we had quite a bit of data that, that I had a great graduate student sit in front of a computer screen for months and months and process that data. So what it looks like is when he got done, you can see the green is when the planter's in the ground. The red up in here is every time he turns. Here's where he entered the field, he unfolded, he went all the way up here, this is where he ended, he came back down, he folded back up, and he exited that field. And so that time, each one of these little dots represents one second. So now I know the total time it took to plant, plus the total other time in that field, the load seed and things of that nature. So when we come up, we start looking at fields. And typically, you know, we talk about whether it's a big field or a small field. When you're farming operations, you're, you're going in and you're renting, renting or buying a whole farm. So you may have some big fields. You may have a lot of little fields. You look at this, this, this is a farming operation, 217 acres, that's eight fields. This is seven fields, that's 904 acres. And what are the differences? This one has a lot more smaller fields, and this one has a lot more bigger fields. So that makes a difference when you start looking at land and, and how fast can I plant this compared to this. And a lot of it has to do with the field size and field shape. One of the things we found out is if you take the perimeter of the outside of the field and divide that by the area. So I've got feet divided by square feet. That gives me a perimeter to area ratio. And if that perimeter to area ratio gets bigger, then our f acres go down. So the, the small uh, perimeter area ratio, basically 50 acres or greater. See what the difference is. When you get in the 50 to 15 acres, you can start seeing that these perimeter area ratios get bigger and bigger and bigger. And so what does that tell us as far as field efficiency? <coughs> You can see this is all the data for the 40, 60, and 80 foot planter. In these big fields, 70 to 80 percent of the time that planter is in the ground putting seed in the ground. In these greater than 50 acre fields. When you start looking at these 15 to 50 acres, now we're somewhere in the 70 to 50 percent of the time. The planter is in the ground putting seed in the ground. The other 50 percent of the time is turning, moving, unfolding, loading seed, things of that nature. And when we get out here to these much larger perimeter area ratios, now you're down to 50 to 30% of the time the planter is actually in the ground. And so that makes a huge difference when you start talking about 100% and taking that 24.2 acres at 100%, now I'm cutting it at half at 50%. So that's 12.1. <clears throat> so y'all kind of follow me how field efficiency, size of the field. <clears throat> so if you take a 40 foot planter, uh, in some of the fields we had here in Tennessee, I found the field that had about the same perimeter to area ratio, but they had different planting speeds. If you look at the speeds overall that we hear attributed in, in Tennessee, about 50% of the time with the high speed planter, the producer was traveling over seven miles an hour putting seed in the ground. There were times he was at seven to eight, a few over eight miles an hour, and that's average over the whole field. But there were some that he was down in that five to six miles per hour. He could do 10 with the technology, but there's something in the field, whether it's ruts, whether it's topography and things of that nature, does make an influence as well. So you take this field, the best I told you you could do is 24.2 acres. That's 100% efficient. This field right here, and you see what happens as we increase speed. We drop we lower the efficiency but we're going faster and so we increase capacity so the faster we go our efficiency goes down but y'all don't care about the efficiency you want to know how many acres per hour so as i increase speed i'm going from about 19 to 30 for the same type field same characteristics of the field now if we go with at seven miles an hour and look at different field shapes there's 105 acres uh, we're at 80% efficient, 
So that's, we can get 27.2 acres per hour. This is what we're actually doing. And when you get down here to this 10 acre field, you've dropped about 10 acres an hour just because you've changed the field. You're still running at seven miles an hour, but now you've changed the characteristic of the field. And it primarily has to do a lot with size. Now, when you get some of these big fields that have a lot of irregularities in them, you've got a lot of terraces and things of that nature, that's going to add a little bit more complex to the system. But essentially what we're seeing is <clears throat> as you move down in size of the field, your efficiency is going to drop your capacity. And I know when you go to, to say you're going to lease or buy a whole farm, you're not going to get to cherry pick the best fields. Uh, there was one field that it was about a two acre field and I pretty much put that in as you should have let somebody else farm that field because you spent a lot of time in two acres turning around and backing up and it was more of a garden spot than anything else. And you can see here it's seven foot or seven miles per hour looking at the same type shape fields just changing uh, the, the planter width. We're at 27 acres per hour and I go to 60, I've got about 10 acres per hour difference. And then if I go to an 80 foot now, I'm about 42 acres an hour. Now the question is, is how many fields in Tennessee can we turn an 80 foot planter around? How many got to where you can do a 60 foot planter? And so that's another question. So we threw it all in, we got a magic equation now. <clears throat> and I kind of want to go over it just a little bit to kind of set Aaron up. I took the equation, and let's, let's look at how many y'all typically, in conventional planting, about four and a half miles an hour. What do y'all plant corn at? Five. Five? You, you, your, your throttle says five, but probably average over the whole field, you're looking at about four and a half. Because you're slowing down at the beginning, and, and that's what I looked at. So I looked at four and a half average, seven and a half, and ten. And you can see, uh, you know, in these good sized fields, we're efficiency we're dropping you know about 15 percent when you get out of here I mean you're really dropping pretty hard let's just look at capacity that's what you want to look at <clears throat> at 10 miles an hour up until you get to these real small fields uh, you're probably just as better off as going slower because you see here we're dropping down at seven and a half miles an hour it takes all the way out to these real small fields and there's about no difference whether you're going four and a half or whether you're going seven miles an hour. So in these medium sized fields, which we have a lot of, this kind of gives you an idea, you know, 15 acres an hour at 10 miles, at, at typical four and a half versus 10, you know, we're getting a difference of 10 acres an hour. Now in an eight hour day, that's 80 acres. <clears throat> you get a weather report that says in two days, the monsoons are gonna come. And so when you start looking at how many acres can you get planted in the shortest period of time, then you need to start looking or, you know, look at width versus uh, the speed. The big question that everybody has is, should I go to a 60 foot if I'm traditionally 40 foot? And this is kind of what we saw here. A 40 foot at four and a half miles an hour is 15. Uh, and when we get out of here, 60 foot at four and a half, we're looking at somewhere around seven acres per hour difference. In the big scheme of thing, if you're trying to make the decision of I'm going to buy a high speed planter, how fast do I need to go to go to the next size and be equal to the next size? And about what we found, if, if you're typically doing four and a half miles an hour on average in a field, you need about three miles an hour extra to equal the next width of, of the planter. So if I got a 40 foot planter, going seven and a half miles an hour, I can get at the same capacity as a 60 foot planter going four and a half miles an hour. And so that kind of gives you an idea, can I move a 60 foot planter in a lot of the fields that I have? Do I buy a higher speed planter and go faster? Some fields you're gonna be able to maintain that. All of these fields in Tennessee were done in no-till. Uh, about half of the Oklahoma fields were no-till, the other half were conventional. I think with conventional tilled fields, you can get that 10 miles an hour. With no till, I asked the producer, you know, why you didn't go 10 miles an hour. And I don't know if it's the it was the first year he had ever used it, but whether or not it was the fact that going from four and a half miles an hour to 10 miles an hour in a 
tractor cab with a planter on the back, uh, it's a pretty big change and a pretty big mindset. He said, if I could have gone faster, I would have. And I think there's a lot of field characteristics, roughness and things of that nature that are preventing going to that 10 foot in, in our no-till situations. So we start looking at farming operations and you look at a, a bunch of fields and you can kind of see this, this farm right here has got seven fields. You look at this perimeter to area ratio, you've got what, one good size field here at number two, that's about 90 acres. And so you can see the perimeter area ratio, it averages out at about 0 0.021. And if you look at the difference uh, to plant this farm at four and a half miles an hour, it's gonna take you about 16 hours of a planter in the ground. Uh, and 22 hours at seven and a half miles. That's not counting any road time or anything, but that is counting, turning, loading seed, and things of that nature. You go to this other farm here, it's a big farm. You can see you got a 200 acre, 124, a 206. This is a nice farm to go plant. <clears throat> you can see here, uh, I can spend uh, hours, 49 hours, 18 acres per hour, 34 hours, 26.3 acres per hour. So basically I'm cutting about 16 hours off by going from four and a half to just seven miles an hour. So that's what speed gives us. And you can see. So what are we looking at and what Aaron, Aaron's going to talk about is we know field characteristics influence how fast we can not only drive but what our capacity is for planting. We know as we increase planter speed, we increase capacity. And we also know as we increase width, we increase planter capacity. <clears throat> and the trade-off becomes where do we start looking at these farms and be able to make a purchasing decision on what equipment we think we need to buy and how much risk are you willing to have? <clears throat> do you get it all planted or not? So I'm gonna stop there and if anybody has any questions, I think most of you are probably more interested in what, what the economics are gonna be.